B20. Helping stepdad install new wood stove in basement. Clear all the basement crap out of the way. West foundation wall has a bricked up area, doorway dimensions. Working, chat about what it could be. Stepdad the believes what he sees type. Get back to work in silence for a while. Both look up at odd noise. Scratching and scrapping, too loud and heavy to be rodents. Stepdad asks what's going on. Only lives with us a short while so far. Shrug, watching the brick part of wall. Loud snapping sound, almost snap pop followed by something large tumbling along the ground. Huge bang, dust jumps off brick part of foundation. Dead silence, stepdad staring agape at wall, then to me. I'm shaken, seen slash heard lots of stuff before but not this. Pick up wrench and tap on wall. Soft moaning, then footsteps answer. Icy cold sweat, feeling of absolute dread and horror. Tell stepdad we have to go, he doesn't think twice. Run the hell upstairs. Decides to tend garden to calm down. Are as far away from the house as we can be within property boundary. Pale as freak and absolutely silent. We just stand on the other side of yard till more people come home. That house dude. Left a while ago, I lost some more for that house. I moved back in about a month and a half ago and more stuff is happening. B17, home alone for the night. Watching TV with cat at feet and dog on the couch. Sharing popcorn with dog. Dog suddenly jumps off couch and hair starts to rise. Starts growling, never growls, and watching the dinning. Starts pacing and makes low woofing sounds. Everything goes dead silent. Start feeling cold and stare where dog is. Dinning room chair wiggles, then is pulled out. Positioned as if someone sat down to watch me. Creepy feeling. Dog paces back and forth in front of me. Don't move till mum gets home. Doesn't believe me. Says this story is better than the last. Be 12 years old. Be outside late at night. Be with a couple of friends. See some weird ass goddamn creature on the front of a freaking bus. Nope the hell out of there. We all swore to never talk about it again. I really hope the freaker is dead slash burned slash split in half, anything. I don't give a shit what happened to it. Be 7 years old. Have a shitty relationship with my little sister, because shock of not being the only one anymore, and so on. On a skiing trip with family and friends. Fall asleep after an exhausting day. Suddenly wake up. I can't move and a giant dark cloaked skeleton shaking me violently. Feels 100% real. That, oh shit, this is actually happening, feel. Unearthly voice telling me, I should act nicer to my sis or I will die. Pass out. Fear so immense I get a fever and throw up for the whole next week. Continue being an asshole to sister because I'm an awful kid. Screw you grim ripper, you didn't do shit. Later I found out about sleep paralysis, but it's still my scariest experience. I remember going to my school about 5 years ago, when I still was in school. Me and two friends were roaming around the area at about 9, not very late but in the UK at winter it might as well be 12 in the morning, and just seeing if we could find anything worthwhile. Maybe even find a way to get into one of the buildings. In the end we got shit got bored and decided to leave. We were coming up to the gates to leave and from a block we heard this, screech. I'm talking 5 million freaking decibels and high pitched enough to almost pop a eardrum. Best I can think of it is two industrial stone grinders forced into each other. By the time I looked back my two friends were already sprinting away from the place as fast as possible. I joined them. We came back multiple nights to see if we could ever hear it again, never happened. Unexplainable as there is no one in the school and a block is history, geography and business, not DT or workshop for any Americans. This happened when I was much younger, I was around 23 or 24 at the time. It was extremely late. I had just got back from a hunting trip, I was coyote hunting for a relative who's a farmer, 
lost two calves over a two-week period that early winter to a pack of coyotes, so, my truck was fairly packed, camping supplies, rifle, handgun, etc. My friend called me over as I was just getting into town, around 10 to 11 p.m., to run her to the store, as at the time her car was in the shop for repairs. She needed to get some medicine because she had a cold. No big deal, thought I'd score some brownie points. I get over there, park my truck in her driveway, and go around to the front door. Knock on it, go in, talk with her a few minutes until she got her shoes on, and we head back out to my truck. As we were getting in the cab, the most eerie howling moan mixed with the sounds of a either a girl or baby screaming wafted on the night air from the other side of her house. I'm an experienced outdoorsman. I've been hunting since I was seven. I've heard just about every animal in my state, and quite a few other states, and I've never heard anything like that in my life. Now, she froze, and turned an even paler white than she was. I, got out, got into my camper, and grabbed my AR-15 and a good flashlight even though she begged me not to go. I walked a complete circuit of her home, but I wasn't able to see over the neighbor's fence, seven wooden stockade privacy fence. I came back, she was in the truck, doors locked, and was not in the mood to return home after getting her cold meds. I ended up staying the night over there. We've never heard the thing since, but I gotta thank it for whatever it was. We hooked up that night, got lucky and didn't catch her cold, been together ever since, 38 now, she's 33. It was summer, and I was 12 or 13. Well before cell phones or digital cameras. Back then, I had moved to the city, a suburb, but it was hell of a lot bigger than the country town I grew up in. Being summer, I was staying a couple of weeks with my oldest and longest known friend at the time, Mike. We were out squirrel hunting, so we had our .22S and were walking through the woods and fields out in very rural Oklahoma. Like I said, it was summer, so, it was in the 90s or 100s, typically hot for that time of year. We had been out for a few hours, and wandered pretty far from his place. We were in an unknown territory, at the time, we didn't think anything of it, we were young teens after all. Thinking back, I don't know if we were trespassing or not, though I suspect we were, as we had crossed a few old fence lines in our wanderings. We had just come out of the woods, into a pretty good-sized clearing. It was at least a football field wide, 100 yards, and stretched on probably two or so of the same lengths. As we were walking, we started noticing a humming. It started low at first, but got louder the further down the field we walked. Towards the three-quarters mark of the field, we could tell it was a backwards L shape, and continued on to the right. It was heavy and dense enough woods, we couldn't tell what was in the other part of the field, but as we got closer the humming became much louder. We rounded the corner of the woods, and before us was probably 40 to 50 dead cattle in varying states of decay. The humming we had heard was thousands of flies all over the bodies. Being Oklahoma in the summer, the smell from the bloated carcasses was overwhelmingly strong. Past the grizzly field, there was a single road path that had been cut out from the woods. We decided to leave, so, we cut into the woods, to go around the carnage, and followed the road out. We hooked up to a road, and after walking along the road a bit, we figured out where we were, and got back to his place from there. As soon as we got back, we told his dad about it, who then called the local sheriff's department about it. It wasn't a big priority, but they said they'd send a deputy out the next day to come get us so we could take him to the field and show him. So, then next day about mid-morning, the deputy showed up, and Mike, Mike's dad Dwayne, and myself take the roads back to that field that we had found. We get back there, and the carcasses are all gone. Not a single one was there, other than the blood and other fluids left behind on the grass, and the lingering flies, not a single body was seen. The only reason the deputy believed us was the fact that the grass was flat and gory from all those bodies, and the smell was still there. He said they'd investigate, but I never heard anything more about what they'd found out. It kind of freaks me out thinking that someone knew we had been back there, and went back to dispose of those cattle bodies that we came across. It makes me wonder why they do that, and what killed those cattle to begin with. Whenever someone came over to my house as a kid, they said it was haunted, but I could never feel it. 
A few years later I moved across town but still went to the same school. I met the kid that lived in my old house and we started talking. He told me that when he invited people over they could feel a presence but that he couldn't. Is there a word for that kind of spirit? I still live in the town and could probably get into the house if I let the current residents know that I grew up in it. This one's my dad's note. Be alone in house at 9, he was sleeping. Said he heard a child's laughter and footsteps. Opens eyes, said he saw straight up a child. He says the child said don't worry, I won't hurt you. Also, one of our brothers died at birth, and he would have been 10. He says the boy looked 10. This one's my nope. Be around 10, living in old house. Sister gave me guitar since she had gotten a better one. I put the guitar behind my drums, it was leaning against the wall, literally nothing could touch it. One night, I heard strings softly being plucked and tightened. Heard it all night. Hear loud snap. Roll over and nope to sleep. Next morning, woke up, had balls to check cause daylight. Two guitar strings were broken and the neck was broken off. Neck wasn't broken off cleanly, it was all splintered and shit. My old house was haunted as hell. I used to see shadows when I slept at my door. I slept with my door open because I was scared, and I could see the shadow was taller than the door frame because the top part of the door frame would be darker than the rest of it. It always just stood there, never did anything. Screams in the hall, footsteps upstairs, shook the chandelier, were pretty common. This one's a nope of a good friend of mine, be a long time ago, don't exactly remember when, I think it was the 70s. His grandma had sailed to the US from Japan I think. Grandma bought house. Grandma is cleaning house, starts cleaning kitchen. Opens drawer, finds medallion. She thinks it's cool looking so she hangs it up on her wall. Thinks Serafine.jpg. Slowly things start to mess up, objects moving, shit like that. Turns into haunting. One day, my friend's older brother, at the time, his brother was like 10, stayed at his grandma's house for the night. His older brother got up to get water in the middle of the night. Says he saw a blue apparition of a man. From then on, creepy shit starts happening to his brother. Brother grew up and left house. Now my friend says he experiences creepy shit. Sees shadow people all the time. One time he was staying up late browsing slash x slash, got up to kitchen to get great drink. Looks over to living room, sees tall shadow with one eye blue and one eye red, or I think both eyes were blue or red, can't remember. Says shadow was looking at him, shadow was tall as hell and was leaning over couch. Shadow goes over couch and runs into complete darkness, the hallway with the rooms. Every time I go to his house I have this freaking fear. I check behind me every three seconds, this eerie feeling something is right behind me. Even before he told me his house always creeped me out. I had this one dream that took place in my house, however, things did not feel right at all. It was a scary dream not because of some scary monster, ghost, or creature, but because of the simplicity of it. I can't remember if the dream just began in my room or if I had a false awakening but there was a strong sense of abandonment. The lighting was very dreary as if it was about to storm outside, still daytime, and none of the lights inside were on. The part that's creepiest to me is the fact that no one was around. It was almost like a post-apocalyptic feeling. I searched the whole house and outside for any sign of life, but nothing. Upon returning to my room in the dream, I discovered a large black mass sitting, almost like a ball of black rubber, in my room and it was attached by hundreds of black strings to the walls around me. No idea what that was slash meant. Another one. I had a false awakening one night but truly, honestly felt like it was me in actual reality waking up. Anyways, the dream was very short. I looked up from my bed to see a black figure start from one end of my room to the other and then finally come towards me in my bed. He always kept his face on my though. Upon him reaching me, I woke up. Not personal stories but stories I'd heard. Story 1. When I was a child of elementary school age, I would stay at my grandma's house every weekend. 
it was my absolute favorite place to be as a kid because, to me, it always seemed completely steeped in strangeness. Grandma R was a weird, sweet lady who was incredibly spiritual and dabbled in Wicca every so often, I remember she used to do things like wash my hair in rainwater and chant to the full moon. My mom thought she was completely mental, but I loved her and loved staying with her because it made me feel magical. Her house was huge and fairly old, probably around 150 years. I always heard strange noises at night, a child laughing, little footsteps, creaks on the stairs, etc. I was never afraid, though. I never felt threatened by these particular spirits. They seemed innocent and never bothered me, so I paid them the same respect. I grew accustomed to the nighttime sounds as I grew older and even liked hearing them after a while. Both grandma and I talked about the ghosts and how cool it was that we were able to experience them firsthand like this. One night, though, I had an experience that wasn't so pleasant. I woke up really late at night and had to pee. The upstairs was in a U-shape, guest room, my room, my grandma's room, and then the bathroom. I was never particularly afraid of the dark or anything so I never had a problem getting up and using the restroom at night. So I quietly opened my door and started walking toward the bathroom. After a few steps I started to feel super chilly and like there was someone following me. The vibes I got weren't good whatsoever, which was unusual. I suddenly started to get really terrified, my heart was beating out of my chest but I tried to keep my cool and continued to walk steadily toward the bathroom. After a few steps I started to feel super chilly and like there was someone following me. The vibes I got weren't good whatsoever, which was unusual. I suddenly started to get really terrified, my heart was beating out of my chest but I tried to keep my cool and continued to walk steadily toward the bathroom. I finally got there and opened the door. On the inside of the bathroom door there was a full-length mirror. Before I walked into the room, I held my breath and looked into the mirror to see if I could catch a glimpse of what I felt like was following me. A few feet behind me there was an impossibly dark and fuzzy shadow, sort of in the shape of a cloak, and an extremely pale, expressionless face peering out of it. It felt menacing and angry and I almost blacked out. I slammed the door as hard as I could and locked it, turning all of the lights on in the bathroom and running the water. I stayed in there for the better part of an hour. When I finally got up the courage to leave I ran to my grandma's bedroom and slept the rest of the night with her. I never saw the figure again, but I dream about it sometimes, and it still completely terrifies me. Story 2 Hey there, I've been following your blog for a while now and I really enjoy it. I'm gonna post a very unnerving experience from my childhood on here that I hope you will like. When I was 10, me and my brother enjoyed scaring each other as well as watching scary movies. We lived on an old farmhouse on the city outskirts. One day we decided to start digging around for treasure, me being a young kid and him being a teenage brother that had to oblige. We started at a rose bush near a row of trees to the left of our driveway. I dug for a minute and then we hit something. It was a small tin, enough to fit a loaf of bread in. We took it out and it smelled awful, but decided to put it on the front porch. The next morning, my grandma who lived with us commented that she had seen a woman in a wedding dress the previous night and said she was looking for something. My mom didn't really listen to her but my brother who always thought the house was haunted was terrified. We didn't think too much of it and just went on with our day. I pretty much forgot about the tin and slept well that night. Unfortunately my brother didn't and started telling our parents about seeing something when he went to the washroom in the night. My dad decided to show us something that would completely throw us over and took out a book that he had. It was an autobiography of the farming family that had lived there previously and ended up moving down the street had left it there. We were looking at old photos of them and reading an excerpt, which detailed the house's construction in the late 1800s. It turns out that it was built for the newly wedded couple who were expecting a baby. This is where it gets creepy. The baby died as stillborn and ended up getting buried where? In a tin under the rose bush. My brother and I immediately went and buried it back where it was and promptly never went over there again. The next day, my grandma decided to tell us that she had seen the woman again and she was now holding a baby in her arms. Kind of long, but I hope you enjoyed this very strange event that I will never forget as long as I live. Story 3 
My girlfriend and I just started our adult lives by moving in together. I'm 20, and she's 19. One night we had fallen asleep out in the living room while watching a movie on the couch. I heard something coming from the bathroom in our master bedroom, almost like something had fallen out of the medicine cabinet. I woke my girlfriend up as I got up from the couch. She looked up at me and smiled, where you going, babe? She said sleepily. I told her I might have heard something, that it was probably nothing, and I just wanted to check on it and she nodded and dozed back off. She had looked a little off. A little pale, a little sick. That entire situation was just weird. She wasn't usually one to be so happy to be woken up. I shrugged it off and continued to the bedroom with caution, unaware of what had made the noise. When I opened the door and turned on the lights, my heart sank to my feet. There laid my girlfriend, sleeping peacefully in our bed. I tore the covers off of her. She sat up and cursed me. It was something along the lines of what the hell are you doing, why are the lights on, can't you see I'm sleeping? I explained the situation and she irritably explained that she woke up early in the morning and moved to the bed because it was more comfortable. She shrugged it off saying I was probably dreaming and imagined her with me on the couch when I first got off. But it was so vivid. And that didn't explain the noise I heard from her room. To this day I have no idea what happened that night, or who was with me on that couch, but I know what I saw and I know it was real. Story 4 this happened to me at my mother's house, in February of last year, and of all paranormal experiences I've had, this was by far the most frightening. Please keep in mind that none of this is falsified, exaggerated, or plagiarized. My mother and her husband were going to a family member's house overnight for a reunion the next day, and since it was the weekend, my brother was staying with a friend. This was the first time I'd had the house to myself since we had moved in, and I was genuinely excited. I had plans for friends to come over and hang out, but unfortunately they fell through due to something coming up. I spent the evening alone, and finally fell asleep around midnight. All through the night slash early hours of the morning I had the same dream. A man, though I was unable to distinguish any facial features other than a large toothy smile, was holding a camera to me and taking photos. The flash was incredibly bright and it felt eerie, to say the least. It felt very real but then again most of my dreams do, so I didn't get too spooked. However, I woke up constantly through the night with a horrible migraine and also severe nausea. I would vomit several times, and try to take a couple ibuprofen, didn't help, and go back to sleep. And every time I went back to sleep I would have the same dream. The man with the camera, everything completely black except his grin illuminated by the light of the camera's flash. Needless to say, I didn't get too many hours of sleep that night. When my mother returned in the morning and came into my room to wake me up, I looked horrible. Pale and just sickly looking. She asked me why my camera was on the floor, I am usually very tidy and organized with my things, and so this was very unusual for me. I told her I had put it on my nightstand to charge before I went to bed. I told her about the nightmare I experienced all night, and we were both very shaken by it but I decided I must have knocked it into the floor while bolting to the bathroom to vomit. I overlooked it as a scary coincidence. When I got up out of bed, the camera's battery had died, so I put it on to charge and went to eat breakfast and clean up. I am a photography major, and taking photos is a huge hobby of mine, and typically it was a large portion of my day. I had a shoot that day, taking senior photos for a girl I used to go to high school with. When I got to the location, I turned on my camera and of course it took my right to the display screen, showing the last photo that was taken. I dropped, and broke, my $500 camera when I saw what the photo was. It was a picture of myself, sleeping. Story 5 This happened when I was about 10 and my sister was probably 6. I had fallen asleep in my basement, and when I woke up, my sister was curled next to me. I was still scared of the dark at that time and my basement is really creepy, tried to shake my sister awake so we could sleep together upstairs, but she wouldn't wake up. I eventually gave up and went upstairs. I was about to crawl into bed with my parents, when I noticed something was wrong. Because, curled up between them, was my little sister. I froze and just stared at them for several minutes, then walked to my room and locked the door. 
even now that I'm older I still can't figure out what happened. There is no possible way for her to have gotten up there before me. And both of the times I clearly saw her face. This is the reason I firmly believe in doppelgangers. I don't believe in the paranormal, but these happenings temporarily convinced me. I was in elementary school. In the afternoon, I saw a gigantic orange slash pink, crater ridden planet slash moon rise up from behind the mountains. It kept rising until it was pretty high up. It was really massively gigantic. It eventually stopped rising and started descending until it disappeared behind the mountains. Later that night my mom said she saw a bright orb flying across the sky. Still unexplained. The other day I was smoking weed. It was night. I don't remember what I was doing, but I suddenly heard some sort of human noise from behind these bars in the wall for ventilation. It wasn't a word or anything, just a kind of grunt. It was definitely human. I listened attentively and another, different noise was uttered, and this exact noise kept repeating with about three seconds in between, slightly less audible each time. I'm suspecting this was auditory hallucinations, but I don't have schizophrenia, yet, and the only auditory hallucinations I've had have been someone shouting my name and such once, and I know they're auditory hallucinations. This time I listened to it and it didn't go away. Very weird. I was watching a reality show about hunted places. During a silent, creepy scene, a radio, that hadn't been used for about a year, downstairs came on, volume 100%. It was freaking traumatizing. Live in the middle of nowhere. Peaceful evening at home. Hear weird noises outside. Dog looks scared. Going to the door to see what it is. Open door. Blue fog everywhere. Terrifying figure is standing in the fog. Return the slab. What? Return the slab or suffer my curse. He left eventually. I'll go ahead and post cause this thread has helped me through a hangover that started last night. Be me, 12 years old. My sister is 4 years younger. I've never lived with my parents cause mom ditched me for the army and my stepfog dad. Go to visit said mom for the summer one year. Nothing is ever out of the ordinary. Typical lower income home. Because we're poor fags my brother, sister and I share a room while I visit. My sister takes a liking to me, we weren't close before this. In 4 Wincest, screw that shit. My sister and I stay up a little later than usual talking. She's super freaking smart so our conversations are pretty legit. When we finally go to bed I start to nod off and then I hear her talking. Who are you talking to? Little sis? My friend. I look down from the top bunk, and see her, sitting up, facing the wall we shared with the adjacent apartment. Her eyes are closed. I hop off and go wake my mom up, my brother wakes up too. Stepdad doesn't care enough about his daughter to wake up. Dick. We watch my sister, just talking to the wall and offering her stuffed baby, sister's prized possession, to her friend. My mom asks what her friend's name is, Amber. Also immediately after she replied she laid down and that was it. A few days pass notice the neighbors that share the wall with us are moving. Something about having to relocate for medical reasons, their little girl is sick. We find out that they've had a bedridden six-year-old that no one knew about. Her name is Amber. MFW my sister knew about her MFW my sister was consoling her. They move and my sister never stayed up talking to Amber again. Not sure what happened to the little one but my guys as she was on her last leg if my sister and her were really communicating. Some eerie and feelsy shit. I've had quite a huge quantity of nope experiences. To explain this particular story, you'll need to be informed that my dad passed away and I am currently occupying his room. This experience happened the first night I slept in there. I finished brushing my teeth and hopped into bed. I checked the time, and figured I'd watch some American dad before sleeping. About an hour later I was exhausted, and turned off the TV, and tossed the remote on top my dresser. I drifted off to sleep for an unknown amount of time, 
and found myself awoken in the sometime in the middle of the night from my TV turning on blasting and displaying static. I didn't think much of it, and immediately lunged forward to turn off the TV. I figured the remote was still on my bed, forgetting I had placed it on the dresser. I managed to pass out shortly after, but was awoken by my framed poster simultaneously falling. Tired beyond hell still, I figured it was a natural occurrence because the hook may have been not sealed on enough. I managed to sleep again, but woke up a third time due to the sound of whispering in the room. At this point I was freaked out, and turned on the lights which triggered dead silence. I slept with the lights on for the remainder of that night. Around 4 years old. Sleeping in bed. Wake up. Turn toward door. Green man standing there. Call for mother. As soon as she walks through the door, the man evaporates. According to my mother, I was entirely lucid. Man appears almost every night. Eventually, he tells me that my mother is going to die. Has conversations with me. I talk back even though I'm scared shitless. Conversations occasionally wake up other family members. Mother gets cancer when I am five. Green man shows up until a little while after doctors say her cancer is in remission. I can remember seeing him very vividly. 16 years old. Think I'm the shit for having a license. Go driving at night. Cross train tracks to go into the city. See old train woman standing there. Old train woman consistently goes to train tracks because she is a train enthusiast of some sort. Watching for trains while wearing engineer outfit. Weird because there haven't been any trains in town for decades. Trains were removed because of problems with the crossing lights. People would cross the tracks and get hit by trains because there was no warning. And also weird because it's past midnight. And because it's raining. Keep driving. Go do some grocery shopping. Head back home. Approach train tracks. Old train lady is still waiting. Cross tracks. Something collides with my truck. I am upside down, groceries spilled over back seat. Windshield is shattered. Can feel glass in my knuckles. See rain and blood gathering on the ceiling. Pass out. Jolted awake, I'm back crossing the tracks. Straight up stop my truck once I've passed and flip out. Old train lady smiles and starts walking away once I start driving away. Be a young child. Sitting in, fenced, front yard. Stranger with facial scars approaches me. She backhands me, her nails scrape my cheek. Walks away. Nobody seems to notice. Years later, I have a scar on my cheek and other facial scars. Have a dream. I'm standing in my front yard. See a younger version of me. Slap myself because I was an idiot. Wake up. What dot JPG? Camping with friends. Staying at place that is farm animals. Goats, chickens, and peacocks. The peacocks are loud as freak and eerie all night. In the morning, we go over to see the animals. A female peacock laid an egg. We watch as it stomps on it. It proceeds to eat its dead progeny. Everybody is creeped out. Be a Girl Scout. Scoutmasters decide solo hikes would be fun, we're 10 to 12 years old. One starts hiking on loose path. The other sends girls off every 15 to 20 minutes. My turn. I start hiking. Really creepy. I'm alone in the forest. See somebody in distance. Scoutmaster, is that you? I'm lost. Person turns toward me. Walks a couple of paces forward. Eyes flash like a cat's. Suddenly, it bolts back into forest. I stand, paralyzed, waiting until one of my friends catches up to me. Insist we walk together. That reminds me of something I saw. Be me, 18 years old. It's 2 or 3 in the morning, can't sleep watching a movie in my living room. Behind my TV is the kitchen, there are shelves next to the doorway and you can see right into the kitchen. 
as I'm watching some movie I feel as if I'm being watched as well. I look past the TV into the kitchen and see this tall dark figure motionless. Just staring back at me. I'm tired and think I'm just seeing things. So I did what any rational person would do. I taunted it. I stuck my arms out and tilted my head to the side, big mistake, my stomach turned as I realized this was no illusion. The dark figure revealed its white eyes that got increasingly brighter and brighter, it then tilted its head back at me. After putting my arms back down at my side I was frozen with fear. Then my instinct kicked in and no matter how crazy it sounded it wanted me to run into the kitchen, where this thing is still standing only a few feet away from the doorway, and turn on the light. Adrenaline flooded my veins fueled by fear and ran towards it. The dark figure straightened its head and its two eyes got brighter. For a second I was in the same room only steps away, but I never looked. Focused on the light switch I turned it on and jumped out of the kitchen. When I looked back it had vanished. I'd like to think my living room had lights on and that's why it never left the kitchen, to this day I keep the kitchen light on when it gets dark. It never came back, but my house has always been active. I wonder if it was the same thing? Be several months ago. Neglecting antivirus shit on my laptop for freaking ever. Browsing the internet one evening, looking at some funny stuff. Pop up on my computer. Why do you smile? Confused, but then I notice my camera light is on. Holy shit. Try not to look like I'm visibly panicking and calmly cover the lens of my webcam. Abort operation shut down computer disconnect from Wi-Fi. Another pop-up. Do not be afraid. And that's how I became more regular about virus scan. Board one night. Decide to go driving down this road near me that I've always been curious about. Road goes from a hilly wooded area to a more open residential area. Eventually road comes to a shitty dirt road that didn't seem to lead anywhere. Turned around since my car is shit on dirt roads. Talking to friend a few weeks later about that road. She says oh yeah, that eventually brings you to this other town. I'm like WTF, it ends in a dirt road. That night we decide to drive down it. Put on Burzum's Lee Scoff album for added creepy ambience. Keep going don't recognize anything after a while. Dirt road is nowhere to be found. Eventually road leads to the town she was talking about. Town is creepy by itself at night, so we head back. Nothing too eventful, but it was really creepy how the first time I drove it I wound up on the dirt road, and there was nowhere else that I could see that I could have gone, but going down it the second time, the road was clear all the way to the other town. nine years old sitting in class everything is normal desk suddenly starts shaking really hard turn around ask the kid behind me to stop kicking my desk he claims to not know what i'm talking about turn around again all objects slash desks in room appear to be shaking nobody else notices in canada visiting relatives Go into town to buy supplies. Enter a store. Everybody is smiling eerily. Employee comes up, asks if I need any help. Store manager approaches me and offers me discounted poutine. Locals make small talk entire time. When the cashier is ringing up purchases, the dude behind me offers to help carry bags out to my car. Never see anybody frown or being rude. Really rustled my jimmies. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. Be a kid. Think I'm an adventurer. Parents leave me home alone. Go outside and by the basement. The basement is chained up and has a door that's covering a hole in the ground. Unchain it. Open door. Enter. Wave flashlight around. Go downstairs. Basement is concrete, damp, and empty except for a huge trunk. Door slams shut. Only light from flashlight and little window on the side. Trunk makes loud creaking noise. Book it to the door. Trying to push door up and open, but it's stuck. Summon courage and run over to window. Open window. Swear I feel something scrabbling at me as I climb through. Head back into house. 
Mother had come home and immediately locked the basement door. Never go into basement again. Try not to wonder what's down there. I was about 14 or so. My mom was out playing at a concert that night and my dad was in his room and very grumpy. I was essentially alone in the house due to the layout, his room was essentially on the opposite side of the house. It was late at night and I really should have been going to bed. Instead, I decided to put in a DVD of Toy Story, we had the box set of the first two with a bunch of extras and such. So I'm fairly shortly into the first movie when I start feeling weird. I look behind myself several times to see what's there. Nothing is ever there. Just a lamp and a display case with miscellaneous family relics. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Without warning, the lamp behind me shuts off. I can tell from the sound of it that the light bulb didn't burn out. It just shut off. At this point, I'm freaking out pretty good because the room I was in had windows that directly overlooked an Indian mound only a few hundred feet away. Several seconds after this lamp shuts off and only leaves the light from the TV illuminating what's in front of me and leading up to the mound, I feel a breeze on the back of my head. The AC was off, no windows or doors open, no fans on. I spent the next four hours with my eyes directly focused on the TV, not moving to the sides by an inch and watch every special feature of the DVD. I later tried to pass it off as my dad setting up our home automation wrong even though I know it wasn't. Went to abandoned house out of nowhere, with a couple of friends because we were bored one time with nothing to do. Someone was murdered there. Go inside and investigate, friend goes though the house, as I felt a little uneasy as my other friend wanting take a smoke outside he wasn't too keen. A little stressed. I said freak it and decide to go search for him, didn't know which way he went, so I went through the kitchen, smelt so bad, and coughed a little. I thought I saw something on the corner of my eye near the stove. Shivered a little for some reason, I'm doing it now while typing, screw you slash x slash, and left to find my friend. He was there in the bedroom laughing his ass off at some dirty magazines he found underneath the bed. Nothing really interesting. Not sure why the former owners would consider taking them. Anyway, stumbled upon the bedrooms, nothing interesting, yet, I still felt some chills. All in my mind, I guess. My friend who finished his smoke was found, sitting in some granny rocking chair in the other room, as we heard a noise while we were in the lounge, freaking cunt scared us. We investigated the noise if even we were pussies. We give him a pinch in the arm for being a dick. So yeah, but, we'll get the good part now. We were about to leave since we were only going there to screw around, because we really didn't believe anything paranormal was going on there. Just as we were about to leave, we could hear a door squeakily opening down the hall. Perhaps one of the bedroom doors. We looked at another, and one of my friends said that we should check it out, and bring a camera. So once we got a camera out of the car, we went to see one of the bedroom doors open, we decided to slowly walk towards it to open the door fully to see what's inside and catch some footage. There was a shadowy glimpse of a figure that popped out of nowhere at the corner of my eye near one of the beds, as I freaked out. My friends laughed. But as soon as we heard footsteps down the hall to the lounge room, yeah, we went all frozen, and wondered what the hell. We were even scared to leave the house, as the footsteps went down where we came in. I know I thought I shouldn't be afraid, and decided to breathe in and out as I decided to walk down where the footsteps went, since we might go ahead and leave. My friends did the following as we're pissing our pants, not literally, but almost froze again. We reached the lounge room alive, lol, and pretty much decided to leave the house, for the last time already and drove off, never looking back. Sounds ordinary, that's what happened though. Ah, I remembered something now, I did look back, had to look, I could see a glimmer of light at the door, but I couldn't make it out, then it disappeared. Told my friends about it they accepted to believe me. And nothing else, that's about it. I have other stories, couldn't be bothered, tired. When I was about 12 years old I lived in a bad apartment. I was sleeping one night in my sleeping bag, mom took my bed, I felt a really bad sense of dread, 
so I got weirded out and went to sleep in mom's bed. I was asleep but I'm not sure what happened next. I was asleep but suddenly I woke up. But I couldn't see anything. At this point, I started screaming mom was saying what's wrong, what's wrong. I could fully hear her and I knew I was awake but I couldn't see anything, and I felt my eye open and blink and stuff. Then after a few moments I started seeing images. The first was a dark ocean, it looked calm and pleasant. That lasted about 5 seconds then I was seeing dark woods, something straight out of a horror movie, long dead trees, and dark night and stuff. Then suddenly. The images stopped, and I gained vision back, and I was sitting straight up in bed, with my mom's face in horror. She told me that it was just a dream, and to go back to bed. When I talked to this about my mom, she says that when I was screaming, my eyes were rolling to the back of my head after a while, and then my eyes started doing crazy shit. I'm not sure what happened. I was at my grandparents' house once when I was around four, and I was gathering up chestnuts in the backyard, for absolutely no reason, that was just a thing that I did at that age, when I look up and see what to this day I can only describe as a humanoid shadow walking across the backyard. I couldn't make out very many of its features, and what I did notice I mostly forgot. I was four, after all. I do remember, though, vividly, that it appeared to be wearing a fedora. It was just sort of slowly strolling across the back of the yard, making no noise. I was afraid of it, so I ran back inside. When I looked back out, it was gone. Never saw it again. Wake up in the middle of the night. Wait, I am sure I closed the door of my room last night. Door is open. Damn. There must be somebody in the house. Not sure if I should call the police, search the house, or just run away. Take a long knife and search for somebody. Expect somebody to attack you at any moment. Find nobody. Try to convince yourself that you didn't close the door after all and that it was just my imagination. Weeks later I noticed that my cat can open doors. After that experience, I really understood what the uncanny feels like. 12 to 16. Sometimes while sleeping, entire bed, floor, would just start shaking. No earthquakes here. No one else felt anything. I slept on a mattress directly on the floor, so extra sensitive to vibration. Never thought much about it. IDK, house shifting? Some of them were pretty strong, sustained shaking. I don't know if this is the slash most slash creepy thing, but it's slightly unnerving and it just came to mind right off the bat. One time I got this letter in the mail, and it had no return address or anything. Inside, folded up, was, like, a worksheet that you'd give to a kindergartner or something. I don't really remember what was written on the front, they were just questions like what's your favorite thing about your family and cute things like that. But they were all scrawled out like the questions and everything on the front. And then on the back, which was blank except for, you know, this, someone had drawn this big ocean scene. With dolphins and fish and clams and sea urchins. And they were all in pairs and presumably in love, I gathered that from the hearts they had above their heads. The artist was probably really young, the artwork looked pretty juvenile, I hate to say. Then on the side, it said dear, my name, you are wondering who sent you this love? It was slightly unnerving, but I had to laugh, in all probability it was my little cousins being silly, but I never thought to ask. I've got a couple experiences, though they aren't the scariest. The first one, when I was a little kid, younger than like 9 years old cause I was still in my first bedroom I think, took place really late at night. I lived with my grandparents and my mom, and my grandmother slept like two rooms down from mine, with my door facing the rest of the hall, so I could see all the way down. My grandma always wore these bright nightgowns when she slept. Anyways, this night I had my door open for whatever reason and I looked up from my bed and see my grandma walking down the hall away from me, and then turn. She didn't go into her room though, I don't remember where exactly she turned. But I got up to see what she was doing, looked in the direction she turned, 
and saw nothing. Then I checked her room and she was asleep. I've heard of out-of-body experiences but can a child actually see someone having one? The second experience, completely unrelated, after my mom and I moved out of that house, goes as follows. I'm home alone one day, for whatever reason, and I'm walking over by the entrance to my kitchen for whatever reason. I hear what sounds like all the dishes and bowls and shit in there shaking, banging together, as if there's an earthquake. At first I think it's just a pan on the stove and the mouse living in our place doing something, but I go in there and hear that it's coming from the cupboard with the dishes and stuff. I go to open it, and as soon as I touch the cupboard door, it stops. After that, nothing like that happens again, but ever since I've heard noises while I take my showers, even if I'm home alone. Not noises like any house would make, but like someone walking, or messing with things, sometimes even talking, but I can never make out what about. Once I heard the door to my bathroom open while I was in the shower. But I've never seen any of this stuff, only heard it. None of it is harmful, just creepy. What could it be? If anyone is still here, I just typed this up. I can't remember character limits so I'll be conservative with my paragraphs and call this 1-7. Pick not related. Obviously. Those coordinates are for a cemetery that was on the property of my childhood home. If you look at the Google satellite view, slightly north of the graves are two buildings. The north slash northwest building is a garage, built where my grandfather's home used to be. As is very common in these threads, I must say that I don't care how believable this story is, it is 100% true and as accurate as I can remember. My aunts and uncles joke about it now, like they forgot what happened all those years ago, but it scared the crap out of all parties involved. My grandfather was a poor dirt farmer who came into that little tract of land, stretching from the creek slash road back into the valley about a half a mile, back in the 50s when a good friend of his passed away and left it to him. Nashville was a lot smaller then and that road was nowhere near as populated as it is today. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even paved until I was 10 or 11, I'm 26 now. My grandfather and his brothers built a small house there for himself and his wife. It was an old style log and chink house with a four room floor plan that resembled a box with a plus sign in the middle. Think of them as being numbered clockwise from the top left. Rooms 1 and 2 are the top half of the box, 3 and 4 the lower. Rooms 1 and 4 were bedrooms. Rooms 2 and 3 were a kitchen and living room. One could walk a straight line from the front door in room 3, past the old wood stove, which was our only heat, into room 2 and out onto the back porch which ran across the entire backside of the house. The house didn't have indoor plumbing at all, no bathrooms, no running water. We drew our water from a spring and shat in an outhouse up until he moved in 94. Yes. Even then, people lived like this. Anyway. If you researched the coordinates, you noticed the graveyard on the property. As cliché as it may be, this is a where the ghost story begins. When I was a child the names on the stones were already worn almost to the point of illegibility. I cannot tell you who was buried there, only that the stones were already old when my grandfather built his house. I lived with him for several years during my childhood and enjoyed it for the most part, especially the ghost stories. My aunts and uncles, my grandparents had eight children, all have different stories from when they were kids living on this property, which I may tell if there is some interest, but the one constant story of which the details never vary happens to be the last story, the one I witnessed. Grandfather, and my uncle John, who was the only male to stay on the farm, had always talked about a ghost that sometimes visited when the weather turned cold. He used to say that he could hear soft footsteps on the back porch, followed by louder thumps as if someone was knocking the snow from their boots. Then the back door would creak open, just a bit, and close. He went on to say that sometimes he could hear something standing around the old stove, as if it were trying to warm itself. After a bit, the back door would creak again, and the footsteps would go back across the porch. I always thought the story was just a scary story, but part of me believed it with a fervor that only a wide-eyed child can conjure. However, 
After my uncle John told me that he had heard it too, I became far less skeptical. I also wanted to see it for myself. So, I sat up for several nights in a row that winter, until it happened, just like my grandfather and uncle John told me it would. I was terrified, sitting there on the couch staring at the floor next to the squat little potbelly stove. I feel like I didn't take an audible breath until I heard it walk back across the porch. The next day, I told my mom about what happened. She was pissed that her brother and father-in-law were filling my head with stories like that. But John, and his brothers, swore to her that they weren't being false at all. They tried to convince her to sit up with us and wait for the ghost, but she wasn't having any of it. What happened next was pure coincidence. A few weeks after I witnessed the activity, we had a bit of a cold snap. If you're curious, this was February of 1994 near Nashville, Tennessee. We had a rather nasty ice storm and it was cold. My mom came to pick me up at grandfather's, but decided to stay because of the weather blowing in. That night, she was on the couch, I was in a sleeping bag on the floor which was rather cozy as we were in room 3, with the stove. I woke when I heard someone walking on the back porch. I saw my chance to prove what I said, and I woke her. She thought something was wrong, but I shushed her and made her listen. I gestured with my hands at the doorway to the kitchen, her eyes were wide, but without alarm. I think she just thought it was grandfather walking through the room. That quickly changed when the footsteps stopped at the stove. When she realized there was nothing there to make those noises, the color drained from her face and she started to stand. I put my hand out to hold her back, to show her that everything was okay, but she was far stronger than me. She slowly walked toward the stove, her voice rising the whole time until she was screaming get out. Get out. Shush tush tush tush. Of course, this woke both John and my grandfather who then rushed into the room, John from room 4, grandfather came in through the kitchen from room 1. They instantly knew what was going on and weren't alarmed. They all stood there like statues. It was totally quiet until the creaking footsteps started again by the stove. My mom started screaming again, but she could have been screaming at the wall for all the good it was doing, until she said you are not welcome here. Slash x slash, I know all sorts of craziness and falsehoods come through here but I'd swear on anything that when she said those words the temperature in that room dropped 10 degrees. Everyone was looking around the room, terrified, my mom finally shut up, then seemed to fly backwards. At least that's how it looked to me. In reality, she never left the floor, but she went from a standing position, slammed backwards into the wall, to sitting on the floor in the blink of an eye. She later said that she felt like someone had hit her in the stomach. After she fell, we heard footsteps, much louder than before, moving toward and out the back door. And as far as I can tell, it never came back that winter. Grandfather ended up selling the land that fallen bought a newer, up to code, house about 20 miles west of that area. The original house was demolished and the new owner has cleared some of the land that was forest before, but it remains much as it did then. Graveyard and all. I'm sorry if this was a bit of an anticlimactic ending, but I didn't want to embellish the facts. Thanks for reading. Ah uh, why the hell not? B7. At neighborhood friend's house. Let's call him Chris. Chris's mom and my mom decide to go to a bar that night and leave us alone at their house which is just down the block. We live on the outskirts of the suburbs right when the streets begin to lead toward dead ends or loop back into the city and the bushes and trees begin to dominate the landscape. First thing I notice when we get there is that the big TV they had with Chris's Genesis is gone. I remember wanting to ask what happened to it, but I was more concerned with where the freaking Genesis was, and luckily Chris had gotten his own TV in his room and that's where the Genesis resided now. We both go upstairs and start playing. It was a really freaking hot day that day. Middle of Summer the ceiling fan and turny standy fan thing could simply not push enough of the hot air out of the room. To be fair, the fans had their work cut out for them because the room was cluttered as all hell. Chris's mom apparently never made Chris clean his shit stain of a room. Inevitably, we get really freaking thirsty. 
I ask Chris if he's got any Capri Suns or Mondo juice drinks. Says he'll check the drink fridge. That's what he called it. It was in the garage and he had to go rummage around his parents' room for the key to the door as it was undoubtedly locked. He tells me to not touch anything. It wasn't until he'd already left that I thought about the fact that you'd only need a key to the garage door if you were going from the outside in, but whatever. I'd continue playing Sonic, but we were playing two players so I thought I'd wait. The heat in the room had a sound to it. Sounded like it had the hum of electricity. I hadn't really looked before since I was so entranced by the video in front of me, but now that I kind of snapped out it, I started look around the room as I sat on the bed. Seriously, Chris was a hoarder at age 10. What caught me off guard though, was while the floor and room was an absolute mess, I know Chris's family was religious and would always dress up in their Sunday best on. Well Sunday. Hung up on the curtain support beam thing were his Sunday clothes. They looked terribly out of place, beyond the simple fact they were clean, tidy, and well kept compared to the rest of the room. No, you see the room had a closet. Why weren't the clothes in the closet? Or even a dresser? Maybe it was just preliminary OCD, but for whatever reason I really wanted to put his clothes in that freaking closet across from his bed. Not my room though, and not my clothes, so I dismissed it at first. I just kind of sat there for a bit. It felt like Chris had been gone for all of 30 minutes at this point. My eyes turned to that closet again. My eyes focused really into that closet. Tunnel vision. Everything began to slow down in the room. I could hear the overlapping whoosh sounds of the two fans go by. I could feel the current of the heat in the room just slow down. All I could see though is that closet door. I couldn't turn my head away from that closet door. My mind began churning around random stupid thoughts. Maybe it wasn't a closet, that's why the clothes are out of it. No no. Chris is just lazy. I don't know when it started. But when I had regained some of my senses, I was off of the bed, facing the closet. Just something about it made me want to see what was inside. Each step I took seemed like it was light years before they concluded in each step of the way, while I was felt with just this urge to discover the mystery behind this closet, a sudden sense of foreboding shot in me. A palpable dread. Each step I took, I began to shiver, tingle even. A nagging voice began to coax and dissuade me. Telling me Chris told me not to touch anything. If Chris found me snooping, he'd be pissed, and he probably would. But despite it all, I felt so compelled to touch the handle of the door, to fling it open, and just see what's inside. The blades of the fans got slower and slower and ground to a halt as my fingertips began to slide down on the warm metal of the handle. I hesitated for what seemed like 10 minutes. For all the fear I felt about what might lay beyond, curiosity overwhelmed me. I opened the door. At first darkness. Then all of a sudden I could begin to see the shape of the room inside as the lightly slowly crept in the room, struggling to penetrate the darkness. At first I thought I saw a wall. But I didn't. In fact, I didn't see a closet at all. I saw a desert, but not one filled with sand dunes and pyramids, no, I saw barren and cracked earth, and lots of it. As far as the eye could see, flat barren earth. Suddenly I felt compelled to look down and I was in the sky. I felt like I was falling but slowly. I softly landed on the rough and dusty ground. I brushed myself off as I felt the heat of the sun above me. Cooler than normal, but still oppressive. I looked around and saw no hills or mountains in the distance, just land stretching out into the infinite. Then, suddenly, a loud thunderous hum surrounds me. My ears are throbbing at the sound. Ringing in my ears. For some odd reason I know it's coming from my right. Decide to go and follow it to see where it leads. I walk for days. I see the sun slowly creep up in the sky and fall down in front of me, making an arc like it was following an invisible rainbow. Hot winds swept across me in the sweltering suns and immediately cooled during the night. Every now and then I'd still hear that thunderous sound coming from the direction in front of me. My strength was almost completely out, by the time I saw it. I had been trudging along with my head face to the ground making shapes and patterns out of the cracks in the earth when on a whim I got the urge to look up. There, off in the distance, a single line dissected the sky. I had no idea what it was, but all I knew is that it was the only thing in this place so far. I kept walking toward it and as I did, the winds around me began to slow and the thunderous sounds would become softer, yet more drawn out. 
Every time I looked up I saw I had come significantly closer to it than I'd imagined, almost as if it were walking toward me when I wasn't looking. I could make it out now, it was a structure. Oddly out of place. Ornate, but towering into the sky. It was some sort of pillar. It was completely out of place for the surrounding areas, yet oddly felt like it belonged. I felt no compulsion to touch it, just to approach it. As if drawing me in, controlling me in fact. Almost as if ordering me, when I drew near, it let out one more thunderous sound which drew off for what seemed like forever, but it compelled me to sit down in front of the thing and just gaze up into it. Marveling at its majesty. It stretched out high into the sky. Its architecture was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was made of stone in some parts and black metal in others. It had a will of its own. It felt like it was talking to me, but I just couldn't make out what it was saying. Then, out of nowhere, I hear the sound of a door open and close and the world around me begins to melt into blackness. I blink a few times, all I see is darkness. Slowly the world comes back into view. I'm sitting on Chris's bed. Chris, two steps away from literally dripping with sweat, holding a mini cooler with like 10 Capri Suns in it and breathing heavily. Says sorry for the wait. I'm still out of it. Freaked out a bit, but convinced I was dreaming. Ask him how long I was out. Looks at me funny. Says I was wide awake, but staring into the wall, points over in the general direction of the closet. Ask him what time it was. Tells me it's been 20 minutes since our moms left. Feels like I've been gone for months. We start playing again, and I'm just doing whatever. Controller feels funny. After a while I look at my hands. They're filthy. Dirt particles all over my hands. Was positive they were clean when I got here. Don't remember this dirty feeling on controller before Chris left. I thought I never left the bed. I'm sure there's a logical explanation. My brain probably just had a lapse in the heat and maybe my hands had been filthy before I went into the room. Hell, even maybe a heat-induced episode of sleep walking and my hands falling right into the shit around Chris's bed or something, I don't know. The creepiest bit I feel is that I was so dead certain at the time the controller did not feel that way in my hands prior. It was the same controller that was sitting in front of me the entire time on the bed, cord extended perfectly over to me. Damn, maybe during all that shit, maybe I dropped the controller and picked it back up or something? Who can really say? Walk the jungle. Hear clanking noise. Smoke monster pops out. Lost. Nah. Alone on the weekend. 12 p.m. Wake up to hear the window banging very loudly properly to the point the window might break or neighbors waking up. Get up to see what the hell is going on. Get torch, just in case, screw this. I even get a bat from my room. Go outside quietly opening the door. Forget about about closing though. Investigate the side of the house, on where the noise is. I don't see anything, though it's actually pitch black. I start to get chills, not because it's cold, I feel uneasy about this, I shine the torch around, nothing. Soon as I turn around, I get a very cold breeze around my body as I froze there for a couple of seconds, no wind around, then I freaking dropped the bat, and ran back inside and locked the door, I mean, of course, why would I lock the door in case of ghosts? Lamau. Then went into bed and shook until it was around 1pm and it stopped. Then it took some time for me to get to the sleep properly 30 minutes tops. TL, DR, ghost tapping on my window? Drop the bat, bad idea, went to sleep. As the next day came, the bat was moved right near the shed. I was home alone on the weekend. It looked like nothing was scarred on the bat, but I never wanted to use it again. But, moved out the next month, as it kept happening and just stayed inside most of the nights, I don't think anything happened inside my house, the odd noises of the wind, I even thought I might have seen a face in my window, but nothing that I couldn't describe from my memory. And everything was fine until then. So moving house, best thing ever. <laughs>